everybody, Jen here of Gen X website design and strategy. Today, I want to talk to you about a problem that I think a lot of you may be having as it pertains to blogging for your business. You're afraid. Your website is the place people go to learn more about your business. And for many of you, it's your actual storefront. When visitors land on your website, they don't get to actually meet you in person and ask you questions or get any kind of impression of you at all other than what they see on your website. And you want them to give you their money? That's a big ask, my friend. So what do you do when actually meeting your potential customer is impossible? You blog. And even when you can meet your customer, blogging is a good idea. Your blog is the place where you can provide all kinds of free expert, yes, you are an expert, advice and value to your potential customers so they will feel confident knowing that you know what you're doing. In a word, blogging builds trust. Blogging accomplishes lots of other important goals too. And please feel free to read my post, five reasons why having a blog is the best thing for your website. But for this video, I want to address the problem that many of you have as it pertains to blogging. You're afraid to blog. I get it. Blogging can make you feel, well, vulnerable. Putting your own thoughts, feelings, opinions, beliefs, etc. out there on the internet where literally anyone can see them can feel very uncomfortable. When this feeling starts to rear its ugly head, ask yourself why. Because something is at the root of that feeling. Now, I'm no psychoanalyst, but I've been on this planet a while. And I've had to do a lot of my own work. So I've picked up a few things along the way. I've also worked with several impressive, professional, highly competent business owners who are experts at what they do and witnessed for myself that a person's level of expertise does not seem to matter when it comes to those who are afraid to blog. Speaking completely anecdotally, these are what I think are the most common reasons people are afraid to blog for their business and why they don't hold weight. When someone criticizes you, it has nothing to do with you. You know that, right? When people criticize in a non-constructive way, it says everything about them and nothing about you. It is their fear and their insecurity speaking. Don't let them project their fears onto you. Now, if someone has offered constructive feedback, take it in context. Feedback is a good thing, but blogging is supposed to be in your words, in your voice, so that it is authentically you. It's not a thesis for heaven's sake. It's your teacher's job to, well, teach you. And they are teaching you the right way to write. Like as in, if you were handing in a paper, or writing a book, or a thesis, or an article for a medical journal, etc., etc. In those cases, you do need to follow the rules, but that is what is so great about blogging. There really aren't any grammatical rules here, except that you need to use your brand voice, i.e. your voice, and be authentic. Go to my blog and look at my horrible grammar. Don't get me wrong, my grammar is actually quite good. But I want you to hear what I sound like when I'm talking to you. I don't always use proper grammar in speech. And sometimes I even swear. So don't worry about all those red marks on your paper. They don't apply here. Please do not deprive the world of your gifts, your knowledge, and your expertise because English is a second language to you. It may surprise you to know that we English-speaking people have a tremendous amount of respect for you. Learning a second language is hard. I've spent years learning French and I'm so limited in my communication with French speaking people. I'm learning Italian right now and it's not easy. I fantasize about speaking and writing a second language as well as you do. If you can speak and live and work in an English-speaking country and English is your second language and function as well as you do, our hats are off to you. Can I hear a hell yeah in the comments below, please? Let's give these folks some serious kudos and confidence because they blow me away. My brilliant client Amanda of Restore Digestion, she's from Cambodia. 
and she had an idea. She suggested writing a post and pasting the content into chat GPT for correction. I haven't tried this, but it seems like a good idea if it will make you feel more comfortable and more confident. I actually had a client, actually two clients, they were partners, who wouldn't let me use the word expert to describe them on their own website. Let me tell you something, you are an expert. Being an expert doesn't mean you have to have all the answers. You don't have all the answers because no one does. When I had my women's cycling blog, I read a book called Make Money From Blogging written by Sally Miller and Lisa Tanner. And they say something like this in the book. To a third grader, a fifth grader is an expert. Bam, you know you've got something to say that will help people. Let it out. Sure, there's someone else who knows more. There always is. But there are people out there looking for the answers that you have and you know it. Honestly, I don't think anyone is going to give you that much attention, but even if they do, this says everything about their own insecurities and nothing about you. The flip side to this is, who cares? So what? So what if some jerk thinks you look stupid? Then he or she is not your person. They are not your customer. Don't worry about them. I'm not gonna lie, this can and does happen, but you should see this as an opportunity. For example, when I create tech tutorials, I've learned to let people know the date of the recording because tech is changing all the time. So annoying, but so necessary. Okay, but when I speak of this as being an opportunity, being wrong is okay sometimes. What matters is how you handle it when you are wrong. If someone publicly calls you out on something you said or wrote that was wrong, don't get defensive, thank them. Make any corrections you need to, own your mistake, and move on. It's not the end of the world. It's actually an opportunity to reinforce your authenticity and build even more trust with your readers. Even Warren Buffett is known for being completely transparent and upfront with investors when he's made a bad buying decision. Yes, even Warren Buffett makes mistakes. Please, oh please, oh please, stop being so hard on yourself. This is most common in women, especially middle-aged women, because we were raised to be very cautious. Without beating up on our parents for this, let's show them some compassion. They thought they were helping us. And I know that my mom grew up in a time when women rarely had careers. So I'd say she's come a long way. I think I'll include a picture of her in the blog post just for shits and giggles. <laughs> but seriously, I promise you, you are your own worst critic. Just rip off that band-aid and start blogging. You are way too smart to keep all that helpful knowledge all to yourself. Besides, being perfect is very off-putting. And I will elaborate on that right now. In a world that is almost quite literally ruled by social media, people are starving for authenticity. Your blog is the perfect medium for conveying your authentic self. I hate keep using that buzzword authentic. I really hate buzzwords. I should have said genuine. Anyway, it always blows me away when I see a post and it's really obvious that this person has spent hours on clothing, makeup, recording, editing, writing the content, adding the hashtags, researching the hashtags first to create one single post for Instagram that will result in zero clicks through to their website. And they are so fake. They're so choreographed. The good news is you actually don't want to do that in your blog. Just be you. I have to admit that when I'm recording YouTube videos, I don't worry about much of this. If I'm wearing makeup in a video, trust me when I tell you this is a coincidence. I don't even care what the background looks like. It's the information in my videos that my viewers care about, not my clothing or my hair, or makeup, or what room I happen to be in. And if they do care about that stuff, then they are not my people. Blogging is the single best way to drive traffic to your website. And it's not right that you would let your fear of blogging get in the way of your website's success. Overcoming this fear will advance your business, your confidence, and you'll just be damn proud of yourself. The best advice I can impart to you is to just be kind to yourself. As you get started, you don't have to be good at it. Just like everything else in life, you'll get better as you go along. You can't refine what hasn't been started.
if you really want to feel better about yourselves, go back and look at my really old blog posts. They're terrible. And guess what? I'm going to leave them right where they are. Is this you? Did I hit the nail on the head? Or is there some other fear that is keeping you from blogging? Please share your thoughts in the comment and let's unpack them together. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. Maybe share this with someone who you think could use some help with this. But most of all, have fun with your Squarespace website.